Hi, this is Sean Chua. Welcome back to SimpleCamConcepts.com. Now, in the previous videos, we have discussed on the reactivity series of metals. We have also looked at how scientists came up with that list by reacting the individual metals with water, steam, and hydrochloric acid. We have also looked at the first application of the reactivity series of metals uh, in terms of the metal displacement reactions. Now today we're going to look at another application of the reactivity series and this is known as the reduction of the metal oxides with reducing agents such as hydrogen gas and carbon. So without further ado, let's take a look at the key concepts that is involved. All right? So here we go. For the key concept is whereby the more reactive the metal, the more stable will be the metal oxide. All right? So it's more difficult to decompose the metal oxide and such is more difficult to so-called reduce the metal oxide, right? So this is the key concept and we take a look right now uh, by looking at the table over here. So this is the list of metal oxides uh, that you'll be kind of tested. Um, it started with potassium oxide and end off with silver oxide. Now, uh, first thing you'll probably be thinking is how come we never add gold oxide uh, in the table itself? Uh, although in the reactivity series we do have gold, right? As the so called the last metal uh, in terms of the series. Now, uh, this is because gold is very, very unreactive, right? Just that gold likes to exist on its own uh, as a monoatomic uh, element, it does not. Uh, so-called like to combine, right, form ionic bond with oxygen or any other elements uh, to form a compound. So you will not you will not see gold oxide usually, right? It's not very common, and that's the reason why we end the list here with silver oxide. Okay. Now, so let's take a look at the reaction. So over here, um, from potassium oxide to uh, silver oxide. All right. These are the more um, so-called stable metal oxide. Uh, why they're more stable? Maybe I do a quick recap over here. Potassium is the more or rather the most reactive metal in our series. So what happened is that you form a more stable metal oxide. Right? So this one is the most stable in this list. And silver being the most unreactive metal over here will therefore combine with oxygen to form silver oxide, a metal oxide, which is the least stable. Okay, so this is the most stable and this is the least stable. It's always good to be mindful about this, all right? Now, let's take a look at the reaction with hydrogen gas as a reducing agent. From potassium oxide all the way to zinc oxide, this section over here, these metal oxides are very uh, so-called stable. So they will not react with hydrogen gas. So I'll just write no reaction over here in short, right? No reaction. Now, what about from iron oxide all the way to silver oxide, the metal over here, or the metal oxides over here? These metal oxides are less stable, right? Because the metals are less reactive. So when they combine with oxygen, uh, they are least stable. It's easier to decompose them meaning also it's easier to reduce them, all right? So when, you, when this happens, um, what is the equation that you can write, okay? So here we go. Um, it starts with your metal oxide. So your metal oxide, when you put hydrogen gas, and then, uh, very important to mention this, you need to heat, else there's no direction, will not be fast enough. Uh, as good as saying doesn't occur, right? So you need to add heat, which is uh, shown by using this triangle, normally put it below the arrow, all right? So metal oxide with hydrogen gas, when you heat it, all right, uh, then this reaction occur, the reduction of metal oxide to metal, and then you also have H2O in the gaseous state, all right? This is your steam or your water vapor. Okay, let me give you an example, because uh, example always help us in chemistry. Do have one or two in your fingertips, right? Uh, very important. So the example over here, let's say copper oxide, copper 2 oxide. Why this? Because it always comes out in exams, huh? Take note. So copper oxide, all right, when you put hydrogen gas in, okay, uh, and then you heat it, you heat it, normally the triangle will go below once again, so let me erase this off. 
when you hit it. Okay, so what do you get? You will get your copper metal and H2O in the gaseous state. Okay, so very easy. Now let's look at a uh, reaction with uh, the other reducing agent called carbon. So once again, uh, the leaves on top or the metal oxides on top there, they do not react carbon because they are very, very stable. All right, uh, even with heating, it doesn't react. So do note that uh, the breaking point over here is different. All right, so for reaction of carbon, it's potassium oxide all the way to aluminum oxide and not to zinc oxide. Okay, uh, that is very stable and will not react with your carbon, even with heating. But from zinc oxide all the way to silver oxide, it will then react. All right? so, uh, so once again, what is the reaction over here and what products you'll get? So it's metal oxide with carbon and again, you must heat it, that's very important. You will then get your uh, metal. The metal oxide will be reduced to metal once again, and you get carbon dioxide. All right, I use chemical symbol here so it's easier for you to remember them. Okay, these are a strategy for you. Now, so let us give you an example, or let me give you an example. This is um, we're going to use copper oxide again. Once again, why? Because it always come out. All right. So copper oxide, uh, if you put in carbon and you heat it and heat it, you get two products. You will get your metal, the copper, and you also get carbon dioxide. Okay, you have to balance the equation. So oxygen, you put a two here, and then copper, you have a two here. So this is a balanced chemical equation that represents the uh, reduction of copper to oxide and uh, metal oxide with your carbon, all right? So um, as you can see from here is basically the metals on uh, at the top are uh, normally more stable all right and they will not be reduced by the reducing agent hydrogen gas and carbon whereas those below will be reduced all right by your reducing agents because they're less stable now i have a special mention over here all right which is who which is silver oxide put the asterisk here okay special mention why because silver is very very unreactive so the silver oxide the metal oxide that is formed is very very unstable they're not stable at all okay so what happened is you don't even need a reducing agent such as hydrogen and carbon to reduce the silver oxide to get the silver all you simply need to do is just heat it all right and then you decompose accordingly because it's very unstable so let me uh, arrow this out so this is silver oxide okay and then you just need to heat it all right and then it will decompose to give you your silver and your oxygen gas let me balance it nicely for you so there's a two no there is a let me check it's not correct let me erase this off uh, there will be a two here and there will be a four here so that will get it to be balanced all right so once again this is silver oxide don't need a reducing agent for it to be reduced Okay, and to get the metal. Uh, with that in mind, I think I'm done with uh, this application of reactivity series, which is on the reduction of the metal oxides with reducing agents, all right, hydrogen and carbon. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a great deal uh, out of it. Uh, if you have missed the videos um, on metals that I have created uh, previously, do go and watch them because they are very, very valuable. Um, as well as uh, do subscribe to our channel uh, to receive more awesome chemistry videos. So click the subscribe button below and I'll see you back in the next video. Thank you and take care.